Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our one Tai Chi lecture a week public lecture from European Tai Chi Cultural Communication Center. The European Tai Chi Cultural Communication Center is a global network platform and provided the gateway to many of deeper applications of traditional Chinese culture, philosophy, medicine, and sonology. We have worldwide top master and in this field to give public lectures and courses, and we hope more and more people in the world will join us and extend and enjoy the beauty of Chinese culture. My name is Xiang Yu and living in Germany. Today, I will talk about the Yang style 37 step of Tai Chi Quan. The Yang style Tai Chi Quan organized in Guangfu Tang and Yunnan country, Hebei province. The foundation was Yang Lu Chan. The Yang style Tai Chi Quan is height and six technical chapter of quietness, lostness, redness, slowness, evenness, and stability. Today, we are very glad to have two master Zhao Youbin and his son Zhao Liang with us. Master Zhao Youbin is the four, fifth generation descendant of Yang style Tai Chi Quan. His grandmother is the granddaughter Yang Lu Chan, the foundation of Yang style Tai Chi Quan. So this culture will be two parts. The first part is around 40 minutes of introduction and demonstrations. The first two steps of gap of the peak cocktail and the step three single work of Yang style 37 step Tai Chi Quan will be interested. Today's lecture will be recorded and the video will be available later in our European Tai Chi YouTube channel. So now I would like to start our introduction of the second part. I'm Zhao Yubin. I'm very happy to see you again. This is the second class and we are going to learn two new forms, grasping the bird's tail and the single whip. But firstly, we will review some points of last class and introduce you some essentials for practicing Tai Chi Chuan, and also the movements and the method of integrating the hands, the eyes, the torso, and the steps, that is, Shou, Yan, Shen, Ba, Bu. Now please watch the demo of last class. For the pre-opening form or preparation form, we started with the feet together and then we move the left foot to the left. Here, I must remind you that with the feet together is just for teaching, for demo or for performances. Generally, we start with the feet parallelly separated with the same width of the shoulders. This is called pre-opening form or preparation form or wuji form. Just imagine, we both are going to have a free chat. Do we start our conversation with feet together? No, normally. The feet must be separated. Another example, when two persons are going to practice twisho, push hands, they cannot start with two feet together and then move the left foot to the left. We must at once get into battle mode with the feet separated. So that's why I remind you not to start with the feet together when you normally practice Tai Chi Chuan. But with exception of performances or competitions, this is the first point. Second point, the following will be a little abstract. Please listen and feel it. For the opening form or starting form, 
we lift and lower the hands. In practicing Tai Chi Chuan, the hand scales are very, very useful and important. We must try to grasp its rules. Example again. We lift and lower the hands in preparation form and starting form. We push the palms in the form brushing knee in twist step. We throw the hands upwards and forwards in the form single whip. During our practicing Tai Chi Chuan, we must try to get a basic law of motion, which is very important for Tai Chi Chuan. You will feel changes of all the parts of the body. This is one of the symbols that you have already entered Tai Chi gate. This Tai Chi Chuan term in Chinese is Ting Li, listening ability. Here, listening does not mean listen with ears, but with your heart, your mind, your feeling, and your sense. Example, there is one cup of water on the table, but we do not know how hot it is. Then we touch it carefully. If it is it is too hot, we draw back the hand immediately. If it is okay, we take it up and feel the temperature, the weight, and also feel the force we use for holding it. When we hold it with two fingers, or three fingers, or with five fingers, you will feel different weight of the same cup. Feeling this change is called listening ability. Listening ability is a feeling, via your sense and the law of motion, you find out changes of your body in motion. It is a necessary process for practicing Tai Chi Chuan, of course, also a process of self-training. We should have such concept just at the very beginning. Next, we will talk about lifting and lowering the hands in starting form. If you do not pay enough attention, you would lift the hands, elbows and shoulders just like a rigid stake and lower them down either too heavily or too softly. This is very common for beginners. Please pay attention to the following and feel the moving process. When lifting the hands, you just feel that the force comes out from the palms. This is hand, palm, and fingers. The fingers lead the hands, then elbows, then shoulders, upwards and forwards. Never the reverse. The hands are just like a locomotive leading all coaches. Elbows, shoulders, arms. At this time, while we lift the hands upwards, we thrust them forward. The shoulders and the back must be relaxed. You must feel that the shoulder blades wriggle forward and then, in fact, we have stretched the arms. This is the process of starting form, relaxing process. All joints of the fingers, palms, wrists, elbows, and shoulders must be relaxed naturally. This is just kinesthesis of the starting form. Briefly, when raising the hands, the force point must be between the palm and the fingers, with the middle knuckles relaxed. We try to stretch the hands. At the same time, we relax all muscles of the shoulders and the back, in order to extend the length of the arms. Now, the arms reach the level of the shoulders, relax the latter, and stretch them. This is the starting form. 
Now let's take Peng, warding off as example. While we extend the hands, we rotate them. And the joints of elbows and shoulders must be relaxed. Now, left warding off. When we ward off the left arm and left shoulder, the joints of the shoulder, elbow and wrist must be relaxed and flexible. The whole body is extended. We are going to learn single whip later. In this form, you throw out the hand, twist the wrist and relax the elbow joint. Then lead the movement of the arm, relax the shoulder joint and lengthen then your arm. In the form brushing knee in three step, we push the palm along the ear side, from the back forward. Suppose you give somebody a blow. It is just the palm or the fist that leads the arm and shoulder forward. When the opponent gives you a blow, you raise this hand up to block it for defense. And then you try to fight back with your fist. At this time, your elbow joint must be relaxed and flexible, and the arm moves with the fist. The muscles around the shoulder must be relaxed, extending the distance, producing a speed, a power and a length. These are relations between the hand, elbow, and shoulder. What will happen when we drop down the hands and arms in the starting form? This is too strict. This is too soft. Neither is okay. Attention, please. On the contrary, when we lowering the arms, we must firstly relax the back and the shoulder, the muscles and the bones, and then the complete arm will be relaxed and flexible. You should always think about it and feel it when practicing Tai Chi Chuan. The above means we must use Yi when practicing Tai Chi Chuan. The Chinese character Yi means thinking, thought, mind, and will. During the process of lowering the hands, we must think that first we relax the shoulder and the back, then the elbow, then the wrist successively. Just think that there is always something in your hand light or heavy, hard or soft, fast or slow. When we lower the hands in our mind, we must think, relaxing the shoulders, sinking the elbows and the wrists as if there is a feather on the hand leading it. Never let the feather leave your hand. This is called leading force. When you drop down, the hands, you should feel that you are pressing down to water balls or springs in water, and there is an inner force pushing them in the water. Never let them out until reaching the both sides of the hips. Now, keep powerful and calm, relaxing shoulders, dropping elbows and sinking wrists will produce an inner force helping you to press down the balls or springs in water steadily. If now you feel your hand are floating and empty, that would be wrong. This is the law of movement. 
When you drop down the hands, first you should relax the back, then the arms will be relaxed and naturally fall down, and the elbow joints will be sunk and flexible. You must feel that there is something in your hands, trying to control the balls or springs and feel them, an inner force pressing them down. You have talked about falling down. We have talked about falling down of the hands. It will be the same when we draw back the hands. For example, in the form white queen spreads its wings. When we lower the hands, firstly we relax the back and shoulders. The hands will naturally fall down. In the form brushing knee in twist step, firstly we relax the shoulder and sink the elbow, then there is an inner power. Sticky force to draw back the arm. You just feel that you are pulling or dragging something. We say that practicing Tai Chi Chuan is just like catching fish in water. All our hands and feet are moving in water, and we will try not to startle the fish. So we always need the listening ability of Tai Chi Chuan. Once you feel close to the fish, grab it immediately, but be careful. The fish is alive and very slippery. If too tight, the fish will slip out. If too loose, you cannot hold it. The holding force must not be too tight nor too loose. You may control the fish only with the same force of it. This is called Tai Chi force, which is changeable at any time that you can feel. So, we use the phrase catching fish in water to describe the movement of the hands in practicing Tai Chi Chan. This produces the feeling that your body is relaxed, flexible, sunken, fast, and slow in moving. The above is the main content for the first class, introducing the basic law of movement of the hands. Hope that all of you pay attention to this feeling. Then you will surely get good results and a lot of fun. The above basic concept concerning the movement of the hands is very important. Please keep it in mind and try to find it out your feeling during your practice. Next new forms for today will be followed. Thank you. Hello everyone today, we will continue to the second lesson in the last lesson we learned, the preparatory form of Yang S Tai Ji Chuan 37 the opening form and the first two movements of holding the tail of the bird left warding off and right warding let's look at these movements in the last lesson again in the preparatory position stand with the feet and move the center of gravity to the right lift the left leg and take a step outward shoulder width apart ready to start raise ba th hands flat shoulder height and width then relax your shoulders my elbow is falling my wrist is Sinking fall in front of the crotch. This is the first move rise hold the tail of the bird. Bend. Squat swing your feet lift your knees step up hold the ball tap your feet push with your left hand and press with your right hand. The next move is right swing turn the waist to lift the knee to hold the ball take the right foot down take the bow step with the right hand turn the body 
s lightly to the right and set the right this is the content of our last lesson in the last lesson we talked about the four movements of catching the tail of a bird warding off rolling back squeezing pressing this is the four forehand of tai g chuan which belongs to the first four strength methods in the eight methods of tai g chuan warding off rolling back squeezing pressing Splitting, pulling, elbowing, stringing, shoulders, T ringing is a total of eight methods. The tail of a bird is specially used to practice turning off, rolling, back, squeezing, pressing, and left style and right style warding off. Then there are rolling, back, squeezing, pressing three actions. Let's give a complete demonstration of the tail of the bird to give you an impression. Follow. The previous action opening form left word ing off right warding off rolling back squeezing. Pressing. This is a complete tail pulling action. We have just seen the complete demonstration of the tail of a bird rolling back. The three actions of squeezing, pressing are standing still. Keep your right lunge with your front and back feet. Put your body s weight on your back legs, then bow o. Uh, and put your weight on your front legs then sit back put your weight on your hind legs and then push out with a lunge these are the actions completed by standing in place in the last lesson we said that this movement is called the right lunge 70 percent of the body weight is on the front leg and percent of the body weight is on the back leg next we reverse the distribution of the center of gravity with 70% of the rear leg and 30% of the front foot. This is like sitting on a stool. This is called sitting step. It is characterized by moving the center of gravity back to the hind legs on the basis of the lunge. However, it should be noted that when moving back the direction of the knee joint and the toe of the hind foot are consistent and there should be no crotch or kneeling the second thing to pay attention to is that when the front leg sit back the knee joints should not be straight but should be relaxed and slightly bent sit here and be stable this is called sitting step and the lunge are a pair of each other and the center of gravity moves forward and backward let's talk about rolling back let's take a look first right warding off this action is with the forearm facing forward sit with your left hand facing forward the first movement the body slightly to the right extend your hands diagonally to the right stretch out at the same time when both hands are stretched out the right elbow should fall and the right palm root should sit the palm of the left hand looks at the elbow bend of the right elbow and the left Hand moves with the elbow, bend of the right hand, the right hand moves diagonally to the right. The left hand is about one punch away from the inside of the right elbow bend. This is the first move. Turn your body to the right and spread your hands diagonally to the right. The second move, the center of gravity sits back and the body turns left when the body turns left drive both hands to the leg ft at this time the body side is about 45 degrees to the left and the center of gravity is 70 percent in the rear leg and 30 percent in the front leg the two hands are held by the belt and the hands follow the body to the left the two hands keep consistent this is rolling back let's 
Look at it from the side again. Turn your body slightly to the right. Stretch out your hands. Drop your elbows and sit on your wrist with your left hand facing your right elbow. Sit back to you. R. And your body to the left. And bring your hands to your chest facing the left slope 45 degrees. When you are in the back seat, be careful not to lean your upper body backwards when you sit back. Your hips should be retracted and your waist should be backwards sitting here. The two places should be taken in. When the two hands are taken back, the left hand slightly retreats and the right elbow slightly drops. Bring the two hands over and look at the left slope. Please look at the demonstration of back facing. One, two, This is the rolling back action. The feeling of two hands coming back with turning waist is like the movement we often see tug of war hold a rope relax the shoulders and elbows through the rotation of the body and bring it from the front right to the rear left by turning the waist. This feeling is called rolling back that is to change the direction of the other forces. This is the third movement rolling back next let's take a look at the squeezing action from the front after rolling ba ck the side of the body is inclined to the left the center of gravity is on the back leg and we need to move the center of gravity forward and return to the right lunge we are about to complete these two stages in the first stage first turn the body to the right and then move the weight of your body from the back leg to the front leg and then form a seven part strength of the front leg and a three part strength of the back leg this is pushing move your body to the right with the movement s on your hands bend the elbow of the right hand bend the elbow rotate the palm outward make the back of the hand face forward and turn the left hand back with the right hand palm forward. This is the first move. Turn right the palms of the right hand are facing inward. The palms of the left hand are turning outward. The body is turning right and the left hand is facing his right elbow. This is the second action with the center of gravity. Moving forward, both hands are extended. Forward th. E right hand is slightly slower, the left hand is slightly faster, and the left hand is placed on the wrist of the right hand. It's like you're not. This is the front. Let s take a look at the side. Rolling back when sitting, turn your waist forward, turn your right hand inward, turn your left hand outward. Lunge forward, stretch your elbows forward, put your left hand lightly on the wrist of your right hand. With the root of your palm and the intersection of your two hands is on the center line of your body. This is pushing. Let's look back at it again. One turn right. To lunge forward. This action looks similar to pushing from the fixed form. You should pay attention to that when you do the action of to the right. You should hold your hands in, and the inside is in the shape of an arc like holding a ball. The outer side of the forearm is facing forward, and squeezing is to extend out. And the hand should be extended a little farther. The hand is oblique and the wrist of the hand is forward. This is the tail of the bird. Leftward in go F right warding off rolling back. Next pressing looking straight ahead. Press the two hands apart with the palms facing down. After 
The hands are separated. They should be the same width and height as their own shoulders. Second, let your shoulders relax. Bend your elbows. Lift your thumbs. Slightly bend your elbows and retract them in front of your shoulders. At the same time, sit back with your body as center of gravity, which is the same as that of rolling back. At the same time, turn your body slightly to the left, retract your hands, and then press them down from your chest. While turning your body to the right, press your hands down to the front of your stomach. Next move, move your weight forward with the lunge and stretch your hands, push forward, sit with the palm of your hand fingers should stand up the arc between the thumb and index finger corresponds to the shoulder socket and both hands are the same height and width as the shoulder s o c k e t p r s thing is different from other movements it is a sitting step and then a bow step to complete this action Let's take a look at the side squeezing. Keep your hands apart with the palms facing down. The relationship between your hands and your shoulders can be clearly seen from the side. Next attention. Sit back and bend your elbows. Pull back flat and turn your body slightly to the right. Press your palms. Down and turn your body to the front. Put your hands in front of your stomach and turn your body to the front. The lunge pushed forward and returned to the height when the hands were separated. I'll do it again from the side completely with my feet separated. Palm faces the ground. Relax. Shoulder. Drop your elbow. Turn your body slightly to the left. And bring your hands back. My body is turning. Right press down with both hands. Lunge push your hands forward. Palm sitting. And bow stance. Now please. See the demonstration on the back. Keep your hands apart. Bend your elbow back seat. Press down with both palms. Bow step push forward. through the explanation just now and the explanation in the last lesson we will grasp the five movements of the bird's tail left and right rolling back squeezing pressing i gave you a complete explanation grassy and the bird's tail is a main point action in yang s tai ji chuan the techniques and strength methods in it are very rich if you want to learn this movement well, you need to further practice the pushing hands of Yang S. Tai G. Chuan to perceive the characteristics of various roads and their changes. Next, it'll connect these five movements and show them to you again. Connect to the opening form left warding off fits. A side lunge. Open sideways right. Warding off. Lift the knee forward, step up, and make a straight lunge. Then, rolling back. Squeezing. Pressing. Show it again on the back. Left style. Right style. Rolling back. Squeezing. Pressing. Next, let's continue to learn about single whip. 
This is its stereotype, it is very developed. The two hands are pulled back and forth, and the left hand is vertical. Hold the hook with your right hand. The lunge here is a left lunge with the left leg in front here. We need to learn the palm technique. First, generally speaking, the palm of Tai Chi Chuan is a sitting palm. The hand is unfolded. Don't straighten. Your fingers completely relax slightly. There should be a slight gap between the 4F inch RS. The arc between the thumb and the index finger should be round and open. The wrist is pushed forward and the other four fingers are gently hooked back. The thumb rests on the four upper fingers. This is called a hook. The wrist must be pushed forward and the thumb must be hooked back to have Strength. This is the hand shapes Ikandi step type just now, when pressing it was a right lunge. With the right leg in front and the left leg behind next, we have to turn back. Let me show you first. Two. R and back and lift your feet. Step up lunge. This completes a turn of the body. Here we need to know a. Tip first, the right foot should become the back foot of the next lunge, so we should buckle the foot. This angle should be at least 90 degrees to 135 degrees, so how do you buckle this foot? Take your right heel as the axis and drive the whole leg inward with your hip joint push in and try. To keep your body as center of gravity, don't move back and forth. The feature of our boxing is to push your feet with your legs. The ankles come in the left leg should be moved forward and lifted. Put your weight on your right leg. When you come down, lift the left leg by bending the knee joint and turn the Body to the left side, point your toes and knees in front of you, go out with a lunge and this completes a turn. Let's take a look at hand movements. The explanation of the whole set of boxing has one characteristic, a complete action will take a long time. We divide it into several small parts. Like stairs one step at a time the point that we decompose is that when our feet and legs move we decompose them in the first movement put your hands flat and put your weight on the right heel the forefoot of your foot can become empty or slightly lift it buckle your right foot and two are in your body to the right drive your hands to the left oblique angle of 45 degrees and your Hands are above your legs. Next move bend your elbows to your chest and turn your body right to the right angle of 45 degrees. At this time the body turns a 90 degree and the center of gravity is placed on the right leg. The right hand extends diagonally to the right turn your left hand palm inward hold. It in front of your chest and look at your right hand turn left to the front take a step forward and stretch out your right hand hold the hook with your right hand hold the circle with your left ha in D next lunge turn your waist and gently pull your right hand back pull the left shoulder apart I drop my elbow, rotate the arm, and push the palm forward. The side of the little finger is straight. Ahead, the fingertip of the front hand is aligned with the tip of the nose, and the eye is straight. Ahead, this is a single whip action. Let's do it again. One. Two, three, or five. This is five steps.
To complete let's look at the change of the overall hand shape from the front this is. The first step put your palms flat turn around and rotate your belt with your hands and feet turn around. Again bend your elbows and close them in front of your chest at this time you must turn around. Look. At the right slope face the right slope turn your left hand to hold the ball stretch your right hand out hold the hook with your right hand rotate your left hand inward then lunge pull your right hand open drop your elbow with your left hand sink your palm and push forward look at it again from the back put your palms flat one buckle your feet to bend back and move your weight. 3. Lift your legs and hold the ball. My right hand is out. Step up and hold the hook. 4. Lunge. Rotate the waist and push the palm. Pull the right hand open and look straight ahead. We should pay attention to this action. After holding the ball with the left hand move forward and the palm is like a whip. Take the whip and throw it forward the hand is in a vertical circle from the shoulder to the elbow and then the hand is pushed forward in an arc instead of fanning out opening and then sitting on the palm it's like whipping so it's called single whip second when the right hand is pushed forward the right hand should be gently pulled outward and the shoulder should be stretched stand here Third, when the hands are pushed forward, the upper body should be kept upright and the body should not lean forward. Always keep your head upright, the tail falls down and the spine straightens up and down, standing upright, just like the big character in Chinese characters requires opening the front, back, upper, and lower structures of the whole body. This is single whip, we have explained it here, so that we can have a complete concept of what we learned in the first and second lessons, it'll demonstrate it again first, it'll demonstrate the front and then it'll prepare the form opening form, this is the first form opening forms. Second. Grassy Ang Bird's tail is DV. DED into five actions, left warding off. Right warding off. Rolling back. Squeezing. Pressing. Single whip. Please follow the back movement to practice preparation form. Stand with feet. Close move. The left foot outer wall. One opening form two grassy and bird's tail left right style. Three rolling back. Or squeezing five pressings six single whip This is what we learned in the first and second lessons, that's all for today's.